It has become a fine tradition for Märklin to present a surprise locomotive with a special flair every year. What brings you to Pilsen, Marco? Klaus, it's the end of September. As you know, it's getting fall-like. The evenings are getting cooler, and so it's time for our surprise locomotive. Speaking of which, can we see it here somewhere? No, I don't see it yet. Wasn't it the 310? No, but that would have been nice too. Let's have a look at that one. That could be it. Oh, really? A beautiful, enormous engine. The surprise locomotives are always very iconic. We like to take a look at what was operating in Europe beyond the German border. And I think this year we picked out something very special. Who came up with the idea of recreating exactly this one? Did it take long? It did indeed. We typically have a lot of ideas, and this locomotive has been there for a long time, because we have been considering it for a while. This year we decided it was time to implement the idea, because it's so beautiful. Wonderful! Let's take a closer look at the engine. What stands out is this, one can almost say, huge cutout. Otherwise the boiler and undercarriage are closed together. Here we have a super view. This is just fascinating. It's really rare that a steam engine's boiler sits so high up. This engine is considered one of the highlights of European steam locomotive construction. Therefore it was probably the right decision to design the locomotive this way. Let's take a look at the wheels. A steam engine is often defined by its wheels, delicate and fine. How big do you think they are? I looked it up, of course. The four large driving wheels measure 1.83 meters in diameter. And I can remember that so well, because I am 1.83 meters tall myself. It's a perfect fit for me, isn't it? And when you stand directly under the locomotive, the sight of the four large driving wheels is particularly fascinating. That's just great. You can also feel that it's under pressure and that something is emanating from it. Yes, you can feel the heat and you can also smell it. You can smell steam engines even when they're standing still. Simply fascinating. Before we look at the model, let's think about what we are going to do afterwards. What do you do in Pilsen? Yes, so well, in Pilsen, I'd say it's pretty obvious. We should treat ourselves to one, at least one, for sure. I'm with you. Before we get to that, let's first learn a little more about this engine. This locomotive is the fastest, schwerest, this locomotive is the fastest, heaviest and, in my opinion, the most beautiful engine made in Czechoslovakia. It reached a top speed, which was our record, of 162 km per hour. That was in 1964 at the testing facility in Velim. The technical maximum speed was 120 km per hour. The locomotive weighed 113 tonnen. The locomotive weighed 113 tons, the tender 81 tons, so together they weighed 194 tons, which was a record in Czechoslovakia. The approach of the express steam engine is a visual and acoustic treat. Did we promise too much? 
Seeing such a unique engine in action is undoubtedly a wonderful spectacle. Model railroaders can enjoy it too. That's because an half counterpart has appeared from Märklin and Trix as a completely new design and has reproduced the 498-104 in its current operating condition. A smoke set with speed-dependent dynamic smoke emission is installed as standard. Numerous other functions are digitally switchable. The open view between the undercarriage and the boiler is wonderful. The distance between locomotive and tender can be changed by means of an adjustable close coupling. Here the engine runs in the tightest possible condition. Buffer height on locomotive and tender are designed according to NEM. The Macklin model has an MFX Plus decoder. A controlled high-performance drive with flywheel mass sits in the boiler of the model made mostly of metal. The engineer's cap is highly detailed and has digitally switchable lighting. The three-cylinder locomotive is powered by a stoker mechanism. Nevertheless, the stoker is in demand. It is no coincidence that the Albatross, as the engine is affectionately called, is in excellent condition, as it is in the care of the club by the same name. Uh, the Albatross Club, based in Bratislava, has been taking care of the engine for many years. Incidentally, it was built by Škoda in Pilsen in 1954 and started running at Christmas time. After it was taken out of service, there was a lot to do. As part of a general inspection, the engine was completely disassembled and restored. This extensive work took over three and a half years and was carried out by members of the Albatross Club in their spare time. In the process, the locomotive was given its characteristic color scheme and steel construction with a white cap roof. In this way, it can also be presented to future generations. After all, it is an important cultural asset for the railroad history of Czechoslovakia. The active Albatross Club members are very impressed with the 1 to 87 scale replica. They have discovered many details that they also know from their large engine. And we are going to do something else. Let's take it for a spin. Great idea. Let's do it. Door is open. Great. The locomotive was built in Pilsen. Now it's back home. There's no better location for it than right here. Cheers! <laughs>